Good service to Grimsby. This train is formed of three carriages. I'm AJ Murren, you can call me James. Today I've decided to take you to Weems Bay, or at least the railway station. You might wonder why a railway station? Well, let's take a look at it. There's a lot more to it than just how pretty it is. There's also a lot of history here, and a remarkable community group that is in charge of its upkeep, maintenance and the running of the little bookshop and the flower arrangements which unfortunately at the moment aren't exactly in full bloom because we're still in pretty early spring. But today I'm really anxious to talk about places as characters as well at least to reflect the idea of places as characters. Let me introduce you to the first place of today, Weems Bay Railway Station. Before I take you across the water to the little island of Butte and the town of Rothsey that are just intrinsically and intimately connected to this railway station because in fact this railway station wouldn't exist if it wasn't for people wanting to go to Rothsey on Butte. I met an old man I said tell me your story He took out an old pen something for me Then he kept walking on down the road And I watched him disappear like smoke And I thought I'd just seen a ghost Then I looked down at what he wrote Said, son, when you grow up, you'll be fine. I know you've got questions on your mind. Life is gonna happen one way or the other, whether you like it or not. Stop looking for the answers, and you'll find what you've got. Searching for glory 
become the, the manager of the bookshop here at Wayne's Bay Station. The bookshop's been here in various forms since uh, 2009. Um, we started off just in this room that we're in just now, so a single room, and we now have three, three book rooms. An ongoing problem with a station of this age, we've had water ingress, major water ingress in one of the rooms where the, the ceiling came in, but that was largely to do with the gutterings overflowing, but this is a problem with the chimney breasts. They're saying that over time they get, they get damp because they're not being used any longer. So if we were still had coal fires in here, there would be no problem. Because they were sealed up, there's no damp proofing. We've got problems with the cornicing around the chimney breast. So it's, it's an ongoing problem with a, a station that's 120 years old. Yeah, we're, we're what's called an, a, an adoption group. So we, we're affiliated with ScotRail and they basically give us a provision of the rooms at a peppercorn rent. So basically we, we generate all our own funding from the sales of the book in the bookshop. A amount of that goes towards obviously the flower displays in the station, but also enhancing the station with the posters and statues. Um, there's an original Caledonia railway bench there that we got from York Museum and so on. So we're always looking at at ways that we can enhance the station while still keeping the, the character mm. of, of the original Edwardian station. It's a working station and we have to always remember that, you know, and there are, you know, there are quite strict rules, particularly because it's an electrified station, you know, there's certain things you can't do, you can't go on certain platforms and yes, we'd like to do all sorts of things more that, you know, but we have to be aware, very aware of health and safety in, in the station. But we have a good relationship with ScotRail and, and you know, we, we can do various events if, if we get permission and we don't block the concourse and so on. We've had, we've had open days and performances and so on on, on, the, on the concourse. We're primarily a second-hand bookshop. About 95% of them are um, donations, so second-hand donations. We do stock a small range of, of new books which have some relation to either the station or the local area of the Clyde or shipping uh, on the Clyde, etc. But down to the uh, the generosity of, of people who, generally, who are already coming into the bookshop and you know they're regularly dropping ones off and, and buying at the same time. You know. It's all down to our, not just the local community. We have a wider community of, of interest who are interested in the Clyde and railways. And so. I, I was coming down as a you know just just as someone who was interested in, in the bookshop and. Just through circumstances changing, I had more time in my hands about, about 11 years ago and asked if they needed volunteers, you know, and starting off just covering for sicknesses and holidays and so on and then got involved with the committee and became the membership uh, secretary for a number of years. So we're all, there's a group of, uh, I was thinking this morning, I think we're about 18 or 20 volunteers who, most of them all work in the bookshop, but some of them also do the flowers. You know, and we have uh, committee members who have a job of, of managing a, a budget and, and the stock and, and everything else. But yeah, absolutely all voluntary effort. 
Since the, the friends took it on, it, right. it was a bookshop, they, these original rooms, this one and the one next door, were the first class waiting rooms, so one for women and one for gentlemen, oh, or right. la ladies and gentlemen, sorry. So they had their own coal fires, and, and whereas the third class had to sit out on the coal platform. Change days, maybe not for the worst. <laughs> You know, it's, it's a bit more egalitarian. Anyone can come and sit in here on a cold day now and browse and sit at the table, look at our uh, folders of photographs and, and so on. And, uh, just generally enjoy the bookshop. You know, it's, it's a gallery as well, so you know we like people just to come in and sit if they like. No obligation to buy. You know, just come in and it's it's for everybody. It's not it's not just for the friends. It's you know, it's there as a, a community resource as much as anything. Open every day except for Sundays, 10 o'clock to 4. So there's about 15 or 16 of us who work in shifts, sort of two to three hour shifts across the week. My name is Sue Hoversall and I've been involved with the bookshop at the station here since it was first set up in 2009. just heard that there was a plan to set up a bookshop and we just thought that sounded interesting. At that time it was the two ladies, uh, Sheena and Nancy, um, and they had a background in libraries which is my background too. It's, uh, it just seemed an interesting project. Well, this is not the original, the first station. The first station was built in 1865 and that was when the line was brought down from uh, Port Glasgow to, to Weems Bay. There was a plan originally it would go on to Largs but that never happened because this was at the time when the traffic over to Rothsay and other resorts like Millport, Arran as well, were it, there were steamers running these trips the whole time. It was really just to bring rail passengers, travellers down to where the steamers were going from. Before that they went from Greenock. Before that, before the, the railway came, people would sail all the way from Glasgow. And uh, actually cheaper I think as well, but also it was a nicer trip because the flight in Glasgow itself was pretty vile to, to travel and it was smelly. And so they brought a station, uh, a railway line to here, here, and it was purely for that traffic really. Although there were a few holiday, well, the villas built for fairly wealthy people down here. And it wasn't a good line, it was never really in, as a good line. So that was 1865, and it was a very different station. It was a big sort of rectangular thing, and it was quite dark and gloomy, and the whole of it, the inside has this plastered with advertisements. It wasn't this kind of thing at all. But as traffic uh, built up, originally the trains ran from Bridge Street Station in Glasgow, which was a sort of forerunner of Central. When Central was opened in 1879, the traffic just sort of took off in a huge way. Um, Central Station was handling about nine, just over nine million passengers a year in the 1880s. By the 1890s it was handling 23 million passengers a year. Uh, so that's just an idea of how fast it was growing. There was a perception that the existing station was um, just unsatisfactory. The line itself needed to be doubled. They actually, Matheson, the engineer, and Miller, the architect, got the contract to rebuild Central Station as well. We started in 1900 and it was opened at the end of 1903. Different orientation, more more tracks, uh, and the whole thing much lighter and brighter. The walkway down to the, the steamers was twice as wide as it had been before and so on. So it's not a Victorian station as people often think, it's just Edwardian. Well Miller himself, the, the architect, who's really responsible for the kind of external look he actually was involved in 70 different stations. He knew how to design <laughs> to make a station look nice. The newspaper reports everybody thought of it as Matheson's station rather than Miller because all the engineering design and everything was him. 
nobody mentioned Willow. He's one of these, he's a very interesting, and he had a huge patches, but he's the kind of famous, famous architect you've never heard of. Really. And it all went through, and it was on budget, and the trains ran the whole time. And what they did, they, they actually built a second little line just to bring the materials in. And it is, it is regarded as the Matheson Miller masterpiece, really. Nancy, who was one of the original people behind the bookshop, her husband is still principal at the School of Art. They had always been interested in the station. When we first opened, we discovered this whole archive of the construction of the station with all these wonderful photographs. And so we actually published a little book about the, the building of the station. It had had this big refurbishment in 1993, and then about six, seven years ago, it had another big refurbishment. It was a huge operation, and they discovered that all sorts of arrangements for the maintenance of the roof just wasn't there yet. They had to kind of redo, not the glazing itself, but the kind of gutters between the roof. to head over to Rothsey. It's been a nice time being in Weems Bay and I hope you enjoy some of the station things. But I really love this island and I think it's well worth going and having a look at. So I thought I'd take you for a little gander. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. 
side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right the future is bright oh, You and I, we got it oh, We don't need no more oh, Even in the hard times You and I can weather any storm Before I sleep Hear the crickets, see the moon Side by side and through and through No limit to what we can do So here I am in Rothsey and Butte and right behind me there is Rothsey Castle It's a fairly small castle but it's the traditional home the original home, the Stuarts, is subject to an attack by many Vikings over the years and, and this island actually was for a while held by Vikings. What's really interesting I find though about this castle is that the moat around the front, which actually wraps around the entire castle now, but the front where the moat is actually marks out where the original waterfront for Rothsey was. Over the years, shallowing, drying out and land reclamation have stretched the waterfront out further and further. So today there's quite a lot between Rothsey Castle and the waterfront, whereas there used to be nothing at all. It's amazing how things change, I suppose. Coming here wasn't really my main point for this video, but because I was so close and in some ways, I can't really tell you the story of Weems Bay Station without also coming to Butte. Because the station and Butte are intrinsically tied. One thing's for certain, the seagulls definitely want you to know that they're around and I think that's kind of one of the beauties of Butte, no sense. I mean, you're effectively just a little over an hour away from Glasgow here. And you know, the fact that, that Weems Bay Station, as it is today, is the second station that was built there and it was... That second station was built at the same time as new improvements were made to Glasgow Central Station and in fact they were made pretty much at the same time for the same sort of reason in order to make it more pleasant travel experience and it only took three years I find that amazing three years what today would only take three years to get done I think the repairs on this castle have been taking three years Still not finished. Is there a lesson there? Possibly. I mean, let's face it, probably one of the main reasons why the whole new station and station renovations in the early 20th century only took three years was because they had no health and safety regulations. And I have to say, I kind of like health and safety regulations sometimes. <laughs> I think more people are probably having longer lives because of them. But sometimes I wonder if maybe there's things we've lost too. Food for thought.
out from behind me are the Victorian toilets. You might be thinking, why in the heck are you pointing out toilets? But trust me, they're actually really worth going to see. I mean, I take you in and sort of show you around them, but and I filming in a public toilet seems a bit weird. And they do charge you, but they are spectacular. Like really kind of amazing. And definitely worth a visit. With one caveat. It's only really the men's that's amazing. And actually only really the men's are truly Victorian as well. Apparently, women didn't require public toilets back then. Which, considering many of these women would have been on a train from Glasgow to get on a ferry, and none of those would have had toilets on board, women back then must have had, like, bladders of steel or something. And just look at it. Kind of amazing. Unfortunately, it's really hazy, and you can't really see the hills on the other side very well. But just over there is the Cowell Peninsula and the Benmore Range. It's not far over there is Danoon and Holiloch. Holiloch, of course, actually used to be the place where it was a US submarine base. And here, actually here, during the Second World War was where they tested mini subs, sneaky little things to get into harbour spaces and destroy battleships. They used them too, quite a lot. And the people that tested them, people that trained to use them, pretty much all of them came here. And actually, not far from here, just across the water near the Cowell, and I think it's Strand Railock, is where they first tested the bouncing bomb. And actually, if you watch the film Dam Busters, all of the shots in that film of the bouncing bomb are not from the more famous testing that happened in England, but actually, they're all from the testing that happened here in Scotland, not far from this quiet little island. Just another one of those things that happen in Scotland that pretty much nobody realises and England takes all the fame for. I think I might be bitter about it or something. I'm not even that Scottish. It is particularly quiet today. I think probably because it's out of season. It's only just spring, really. I suppose Butte really gets going until the summer months. But I really wanted to come here. There are other things about Butte that I really want to go back and see, see for the first time, actually. Things that I really haven't been to before. And there's other stories about Butte to tell as well. I'm just here, in fact. This is an old pavilion. There's a whole story there. But I think one of the reasons that I always like coming here is actually because, on the whole, it's a place with character. But it's also kind of peaceful, quiet. There's a strong sense of community in Butte as well. And I think that's something else I want to talk about in the future. Sorry, I got a nice little tip off, of course, just today. But I do believe that's my ferry coming in. So I think I'm going to make this it for today. I hope you liked my little journey with you and taking you to. Rothsey and to Weems Bay Station. I hope you found some of that quite informative. But I think the main 
message for today is to think about places as characters because that's really something I love to do so with that if you have enjoyed this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe it's a new video every Sunday I look forward to seeing you then take care